talking about how Jesus loves you. Who loves you? Jesus loves me. That's right, you guys. Jesus loves you and Jesus loves me and that is so exciting. Jesus loves us all the time and he wants to be our friends and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. But first, we're gonna stand up and sing together. His love will never quit. His love will never run away. Even when I get upset, His love is still forgiving me. And it's all because, all because His love isn't just a little bit. He loves me a whole lot. our memory verse. So if you're not still standing up, get back on your feet and let's practice together. Let's go. A friend loves at all times. And that's in Proverbs 17, 17. Let's say it one more time together. A friend loves at all times. And that is in Proverbs 17, 17. Now remember, if you guys memorize your memory verse and the motions, I want your parent to take a video of you and send it to me so I can send you one of our friends. That's right, three of you guys are gonna get to take home one of our special friends this month. If you memorize the verse and the motions, I wanna see both because I wanna know that you've been practicing. All right, now we're gonna head to the playhouse for our Bible story. And this week we're talking about two sisters and when Jesus came to their house to hang out with them. You guys, that is so exciting that Jesus would go to their house to play with them. That's so fun. Let's head to the playhouse and learn more. Who? Who? You know what time it is? It's time to hear a story full of wonder. There's so much to the clubhouse. Explore Poppy here, and I'm so glad you can join me on this big adventure today. I'm searching all over the sandy desert for buried treasure. Psst. It's just me, Poppy. 
I'm loving the new sandbox so much that I'm pretending it's a big desert and I'm searching for buried treasure. This is gonna be so much fun. Yes, yes, I found just the place. This is where we need to dig for the buried treasure. Oh, wow, I completely forgot that grandma was coming over today. Whenever she visits, she loves for me to play her favorite game with her, Go Fish. But I really don't want to stop playing in the new sandbox yet. What should I do? Who? Who? It's Ollie. Hi there, Poppy. Who? Who? Playing Explorer, are you? Hey, Ollie. Yep, I sure am. I'm having so much fun playing in the new sandbox. The problem is, my grandma's coming over to visit, and I don't want to stop playing in the sandbox yet. Ollie, what should I do? Trying to figure out what to do? I have the perfect story for you. Just listen to this. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Oh, hey friends, I'm Justin the Mailman. Look at all of these letters I have today. Friends on a trip, birthday cards. Oh, and this one is a get well soon card from one sister to another. Oh, that reminds me of today's story. Are you ready for it? Great, I'll just put the story mail in the mailbox and... Okay, so today's true story from the Bible happens at a house like this. Two sisters lived there, Mary and Martha, and they were friends with Jesus. One day, they heard Jesus was coming to visit them at their house. They were so excited, and Martha ran off to get everything ready. Do you like to have friends over at your house? Me too! What do you like to play? Uh, raise your hand if you like to color with your friends. Oh, that's so exciting. Raise your hand if you like to eat snacks with your friends. Mmm, yummy snacks. Raise your hand if you like to play outside with your friends. <laughs> that's so great. It's so good to spend time with friends. As soon as Jesus got to Mary and Martha's house, Mary sat right down at his feet. She wanted to hear everything Jesus had to say. Her friend Jesus was here, and she didn't want to miss anything. But Martha... Wait, has anyone seen Martha? There she is. Oh, now she's gone. Martha was very busy. She was here. She was there. She was cooking and cleaning. She was trying to make everything perfect because she loved Jesus so much. And finally, she went to Jesus and said, make my sister help me, I'm doing all the work. But Jesus told Martha that spending time with him is the best thing to do. She didn't need to be worried about the cooking and the cleaning. He just wanted to spend time with her. That's the kind of friend Jesus is. He doesn't need everything to be just right. He loves us no matter what, and he wants to spend time with you, 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 and you. So we should talk to him and dance and sing songs to him and take walks and thank him for all of the things he's made because Jesus loves spending time with us and wants to be our friend forever. Oh, hey there, Ollie. Tell me, who loves you? Jesus loves me. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who loves you? Jesus loves me. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. I'll see you next time. So there's your story. 
It's all true. Jesus wanted to spend time with Mary and Martha. And he wants to spend time with you, too. Thanks, Sally. Goodbye to you. Who? Who? Wow, what a great story. Martha was so busy with what she was doing, but Mary stopped to spend time with Jesus. Jesus wanted to spend time with both of them, and he wants to spend time with me and you. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say, got it. Get it? Got it! Good! I know what I need to do. I should go spend time with my grandma. Hey, I just got a great idea. Maybe I can read her this story from my Bible so I can spend time with her and Jesus too. She'll love that. I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Wow, you guys, Martha did not have to worry about all the cooking and the cleaning around her house. Jesus just wanted to spend some time with her. And that's the kind of friend Jesus is. Jesus is a friend that wants to spend time with you because he loves you. Who loves you? Jesus loves me. That's right, you guys, Jesus loves us and he wants to spend time with us. And the way that we can spend time with him now is through praying and through, you know, just walking around and thinking about him. Maybe you can go on a nature walk and admire all the beautiful creations. You can do whatever. God just wants to spend time with you. And you can spend time with him now, even if you can't see him. He lives in your heart and he wants to hear about your day. He wants to be your friend. So with that in mind, let's pray together. And then I will send you off on the rest of your day. God, thank you so much that you want to spend time with us and that you want to be our friend. I pray that you would just remind us to take time out of our days to talk to you and to think about you and to look around and just appreciate all that you give us, God. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, that's it for me, and I'll see you next time. Have a great week. Bye-bye. A lot of this. church and especially of all of you. I'm also a super fan of kindness. Being kind rules and it's important that with the things we say and do that we show people they're important to us. We know you all have some great dance moves. Isn't it so fun when you're watching a game at a stadium or even on TV and you see all the people dancing and going crazy to the music? Let's pretend we're at a stadium at a game and a camera comes by and puts us on the big screen. 
Let's get to your feet and dance and sing as we worship God together. to be on the Jumbotron. Do you remember our memory verse for this month? It's Colossians 3.12. You are God's chosen people. You're holy and dearly loved. So put on tender mercy and kindness as they were your clothes. Don't be proud, be gentle and patient. I love thinking of kindness that way. We can put on kindness like we put on our clothes. In other words, don't leave home without it. Let's hear a story from the Bible about one of God's people who showed great kindness. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the Book of Ruth. In the land of Moab, there lived a young woman named Ruth. She married a man from Judah and must have dreamed of a large family and many children. We'll name them Zeke and Hannah and... But Ruth's happily ever after ended before it began. Her husband died and his brother too, and that left Ruth alone with her sister-in-law Orpah and her mother-in-law Naomi, whose husband died too. I have nothing left. Naomi had come to live in Moab during a famine in Judah, but she had gotten word that there was plentiful food in her homeland again, so she planned to take a road trip. Ruth, Orpah, 
Go back to your family homes. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown me. So Orpah kissed her mother-in-law and left, but Ruth wouldn't budge. I'm going with you. Look, your sister-in-law is going back to her people. Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Well, okay then. Finally, after a long and dusty journey, the two women arrived in Naomi's hometown of Bethlehem. Everywhere along the road, barley rippled in the breeze, golden and ready to harvest. Is that Naomi? She don't look so good. Don't call me Naomi. The Lord has made my life bitter. I went away full and the Lord has brought me back empty. Don't listen to them. You just need dinner and a nap. Finding food was their top priority. Some of those barley fields belong to my husband's relative, Boaz. The grain is being harvested right now. Let me go to the fields and pick up the leftovers. Go, my daughter. The law instructed the landowners to leave behind some of the harvest for people who needed food. So Ruth followed behind the harvesters, gathering every bit of barley that fell to the ground. Barley. Let's see, you can barbecue it, boil it, broil it, saute it. Ruth worked hard in the heat of the day. In the afternoon, Boaz came out to survey the harvest. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. Boaz spotted Ruth hard at work and asked his overseer, Who is that young woman? She came back from Moab with Naomi. She asked if she could pick up the extra grain and has barely rested all day. Boaz was moved by Ruth's care for Naomi. He waded through the barley to speak with her. Stay here and follow along where the men are harvesting. I'll make sure no one bothers you. And when you're thirsty, you get a drink from the water jars. Why are you so kind to me, a foreigner? I've been told what you've done for your mother-in-law, how you left your homeland to come here. May the Lord reward you. Boaz offered Ruth bread and roasted grain to eat, and at the end of the day, she was able to bring a large amount of grain home to Naomi. So much food! Ruth continued to work in Boaz's fields until the end of the grain harvest, but even then, life would have been very difficult for two women living alone together. So Naomi laid out a plan for Ruth. I will do whatever you say. At the end of the harvest, the workers threshed the grain to separate the edible kernel from the straw. Then they held a big celebration. When the meal was over and the lights burned low, Boaz laid down near the pile of grain to sleep. Ruth arrived and approached Boaz just as Naomi had told her to do. She folded the blanket away from his feet and lay down nearby. <gasps> Who's there? It's me, Ruth. Please give me your protection since you're responsible for our family. Boaz was surprised, but what Ruth had said was true. The Lord bless you. Don't be afraid, I'll do what you ask. Everyone knows you are wise and kind. Even though Boaz agreed to help Ruth, there was a family member who was closer than Boaz. So in the morning, Boaz set out to meet that man and the town elders to settle the matter. I will buy Naomi's land and also marry Ruth, if you will let me. Well, I sure can't purchase Naomi's land and take care of my own land too. So we're good? Go right ahead. Today, you are all my witnesses that I will buy Naomi's land and marry her daughter-in-law, Ruth. As soon as it could be arranged, Boaz and Ruth were married. Naomi came to live with them, and a short time later, Ruth and Boaz had a new baby boy. His name is Obed. Aren't you the sweetest little thing? So through the kindness of Boaz and Ruth, Naomi had a brand new home and a brand new family too. Everyone could see the difference in her face. Praise be to the Lord. He's given you a new lease on life, Naomi. Yeah, that Ruth is better to you than seven sons. Now Ruth's story doesn't end there. Her son Obed had a son named Jesse, who had a son named David, King David. And hundreds of years later, a new baby boy was born in Bethlehem who was a descendant of King David, and his name was Jesus. when you're kind to the people who are closest to you. So our bottom line for this week is be kind to your family and friends. Say that with me. 
Be kind to your family and friends. That means we should be kind even when we're tired or grumpy. We should cheer others on no matter what. The best super fans are the ones who know us best and love us anyway. So let's be kind to our family and friends. Let's pray and ask God to help us. Dear God, I thank you so much for the story of Ruth in your word and the example of kindness um, that that has shown us. I pray that we would just um, we would just embody that story, dear God, and ha use it as a reminder to be kind to our closest family and friends, dear God. Um, thank you for the the example of of your ultimate kindness and love that you've shown to us, and I pray that we would just reflect that to others. We love you and thank you. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Some